This truck driver from Hubei hasn't had a delivery in two days. He expressed Hubei is practically at a standstill. There's no freight available at all. I've searched all over Hubei and there's not even a single lead I can call about. Vehicle maintenance, fuel, highway tolls, and food all cost money and he can no longer sustain himself. In a truck parking lot in Chengdu, Sichuan, as seen in the video, many empty trucks are parked. Some netizens have revealed that Chengdu's freight business has ceased operations. China's freight industry is in recession, forcing truck drivers who took loans to purchase their trucks to default on payments. Insiders in China have revealed that since June, there's been a wave of truck drivers defaulting, unable to afford monthly rentals or repay loans. As a result, many trucks have been repossessed by financial institutions or affiliate motor companies. The man filming the video revealed that he had visited this parking lot in April and found it almost empty. Now it's full, with a startling number of repossessed trucks. Despite the Chinese government abandoning its zero-COVID policy last December, the anticipated economic recovery has not materialized. Instead, there's been a significant increase in unemployment and industries are becoming even more competitive. A driver from the Chinese cargo company Huolala stated, The freight industry is the most cutthroat now. If possible, I wish to leave this chaotic sector. Wu Jun from Anhui has been in the freight industry for three years, mainly operating in the Yangtze River Delta region covering Jiangsu, Zhejiang, and Shanghai. Wu Jun said he initially believed that the freight industry would thrive post-pandemic. However, he didn't anticipate the sudden downturn after the Chinese New Year. Quenshan in Jiangsu, formerly known as the World's Factory, has witnessed numerous foreign companies departing in recent years. This year, Foxconn, which had been in the region for nearly 30 years, shifted its production to Southeast Asia, marking the end of Quenshan's golden era. Not just Quenshan, but also foreign investments in Suzhou, Jiangsu have pulled out, with clear implications for the local economy. Wu Jun noted, Quenshan has indeed seen many factories leave this year, as has the Wujiang area in Suzhou. The entire Yangtze River Delta region has witnessed the departure of numerous factories. When foreign companies withdraw their investments, the impact on us is significant. Wu Jun stated, All the smaller factories and stores connected to the main factories have either closed down or relocated. When they leave, our business inevitably dwindles. We primarily cater to these smaller factories, delivering goods to the larger ones. If the major factories leave, the smaller ones can't survive either, and thus we're out of business. This year's freight volume is not even half of last year's. Liu Hong, a truck driver from Huolala and Bengbu, Anhui, also noted that the freight industry experienced a drastic decline post-pandemic affected by both the international situation and China's economic environment. Liu Hong added, Now at least 10 people vie for each order, sometimes even dozens. The number of newcomers has increased by more than half compared to before. Liu Hong said with a sense of resignation, If one has the means, it's better to switch industries as soon as possible. You can't change this environment, you can only adapt yourself to it. Another truck driver disclosed that the current state of China's freight industry is incomparable to the past. Dedicated routes don't work anymore. Due to a lack of freight, he once drove over 300 kilometers from Fuyang and Wei with an empty truck to return home. He candidly shared that this year's shipment volume is noticeably less than before. Earlier, he regularly made a trip every two days, delivering goods and then finding a return load, rarely driving empty. Now, he often drives without a cargo load, and many of his fellow truck driver friends are in the same situation. He lamented, I see no hope for the freight industry. 
with the decline in foreign trade, the phenomenon of empty containers piling up at ports continues. According to a report by China's Yitai Financial News, in mid-July, Shanghai's Yangshan port was regularly filled with stacks of containers, six to seven layers high. A truck driver was seen cooking behind an idle trailer, with rows of waiting trucks in front and behind him. On the road from the Donghai Bridge to the port, the number of empty trucks visibly exceeded those loaded with containers. As the world's largest container port, the phenomenon at Shanghai's Yangshan port is quite representative. Compared to the decline in foreign trade, the shipping market faces an even greater challenge due to the persistently increasing supply demand imbalance. The downturn in foreign trade has dashed industry hopes for a market demand recovery post-pandemic. The latest official data released by China shows that in July, China's total exports declined by 14.5 percent year on year, faster than expected. This is the largest monthly decline since the outbreak of the pandemic in February 2020. Data reveals that China's exports to the U.S. in July plummeted to forty-two point three billion dollars, a stark twenty-three percent decline year on year. Many U.S. firms are hastening their efforts to reduce their dependence on Chinese supply chains. Official data released by the U.S. indicates that in the first five months of this year, imports from China collapsed by twenty-four percent. Positioning Mexico ahead of China as America's top trading partner, a synergy of political and economic factors is propelling a global supply chain reshuffling, resulting in fewer foreign investors establishing factories in China. The Washington Post reported on August six that numerous companies such as HP, Stanley Black and Decker, and Lego have been re-evaluating and adjusting their supply chains in recent years. Vietnam and Thailand have emerged as prime choices for foreign companies looking to diversify their supply chains outside of China. India is also drawing attention from some manufacturers. With Apple planning to amplify its iPhone production in the country, while the other Asian nations are set to ramp up their exports to the U.S., China is the one paying the price. China's role as the epicenter of global manufacturing may face its sternest challenge since its entry into the World Trade Organization over two decades ago. Currently, for every six dollars Americans spend on imported goods. One dollar is spent on Chinese products, compared to one dollar out of every four before the pandemic. Data from the Oxford Economics Institute shows that annual investment expenditures in China for new or greenfield sites drastically decreased from a hundred billion dollars in 2010 to fifty billion dollars in 2019, and merely eighteen billion dollars last year. Additionally, China's exports to the European Union and ASEAN have also seen significant reductions, plummeting 21 percent. Concurrently, Japan is slashing its imports from China. Yet, some exporters argue that the reality feels even more dire than the official figures suggest. Mr. Jiang, a pseudonym from Zhejiang Province, who works in communication equipment exports, shared with reporters that his primary export destinations include Southeast Asia, Central Asia, and Europe and America. In the first quarter of this year, exports declined by 20 percent year on year, and 30 percent in the second quarter, an increasingly steep decline. Mr. Jiang's firm recorded an export value of nine million dollars in 2022, but just three million dollars in the first seven months of this year. He projects a yearly export reduction of about 50 percent. Compared to his peers, Mr. Jiang feels his situation isn't the worst, as many report even more severe downturns. Exports remain one of the primary pillars driving China's economic growth. Impacting millions of businesses and employment opportunities, 
a weak export performance poses the risk of pushing the already fragile Chinese economy towards deflation. According to an analysis cited by the Associated Press, China's exports are predicted to continue descending in the coming months, possibly bottoming out by the end of the year, due to the challenging short-term outlook for consumer spending in developed economies. Official data also indicates that China's imports in July declined by 12.4 percent year on year, marking one of the worst performances in recent years. Analysts point out that with imports still dropping in July, this foreshadows not only a contraction in consumption, demand, and production in China, but also the likely onset of a vicious cycle of deflation. Potentially leading the Chinese economy into a prolonged recession, the Financial Times quoted Julian Evans Pritchard, the head of China Economic Analysis at Capital Economics, stating that the import data performance was dismal. Signs of recovery seen earlier this year disappear in July, indicating that China's domestic recovery has rapidly deteriorated in the past one to two months. Following the quick economic rebound after the sudden lift of pandemic restriction in December 2022, Chinese leaders have continuously been trying to stimulate business and consumer activities. However, compared to the first quarter's growth rate of 2.2 percent, the economic growth in the second quarter was only 0.8 percent. This translates to an annual growth of merely 3.2 percent. Marking the slowest pace in China over the past thirty years. Recently, China's National Bureau of Statistics announced that the official Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index (PMI) for July stood at forty-nine point three, falling below the benchmark of fifty, signaling contraction. This is the fourth consecutive month that it's been in the contraction zone, with official PMIs. Of forty nine point two, forty eight point eight, and forty nine for April through June, respectively, experts deduce that weak consumer power in China implies a lack of production, creating a negative cycle. For a long time, foreign investment, consumption, and exports have been seen as the three pillars of China's economy. Some analysts argue that the Chinese Communist Party's strict zero COVID policy during the pandemic led many foreign investors to pull out. After the lifting of restrictions, high unemployment and reduced household incomes resulted in weak consumption. The significant import decline in July has added insult to injury. The uncertainty surrounding China's economic outlook has left its stock market underperforming. Notably, Ark Invest, founded by Kathy Wood, recently liquidated all its holdings in Chinese stocks from its Ark Innovation ETF, drawing considerable attention from financial markets. According to the Wall Street Journal. Around 200 million individual investors in China have exited the stock market, with increasing numbers funneling their investments into money market funds, insurance products, or simply depositing it in banks, having a significant impact on the A shares market. These individual investors have a massive influence on stock prices in China. Unlike the U.S. stock market, which is largely driven by large institutions. China's stock market is propelled by its 219 million individual traders. Official estimates suggest that last year, trades by individual investors constituted approximately 60 percent of the total volume in China's stock market. In contrast, U.S. retail investor trades make up less than a fifth. The unease among individual investors underscores that China has a long road ahead to recover from its economic distress.